The analogy of a garden has formed a part of various mythologies and belief systems of the world. A garden has been viewed as a defined space that encompasses within itself the reflection of the cosmos. It represents order and harmony. While the garden of the heart expresses who we are as an individual and who we may become. So, let us cultivate the garden of our heart, learning from this gardener's experience for whom architecture is an expression of what we are within as an individual and as a society. So, so a long story. As you see, there are, there are holes, holes now in my memory. It's interesting for me to re try to recall these things before they slip from my memory entirely. I was born in 1912 in o Omaha, Nebraska, which is a state in the very center of the United States. In fact, I spent part of my childhood on a cat on a farm which was known as the 1733 farm, farm or, or because it was supposed to be 1733 miles from there to the Atlantic Ocean or to the Pacific Ocean. So it's the very center of the United States. Joseph Allen Stein started his education at the University of Illinois and later on went to Cranbrook Academy of Art. Well, I stayed at Cranbrook, which is headed by Elio Sarno. I have the memory of having started with excellent teachers. Uh, Carl Miller taught, taught sculpture there at Cranbrook, and that was a very powerful influence on my understanding of design. Well, Frank Lloyd Wright and Louis Sullivan were already big names, but I'm partly a follower of Frank Lloyd Wright's work. Well, I respected his work very highly. Falling Water was one that was of interest to me because I happened to know the owner. I was a junior draftsman at Neutron. He was a very intelligent man, which meant knowledge of history and of ecology. He was probably the first person to have written complex and coherent state on the relationship of architecture and ecology. While Frank Lloyd Wright inspired Stein to spell nature with a capital N, just the way one spells God with a capital G, Neutra introduced to him the unique ability to integrate machine construction with natural surroundings. Yes, I was very fortunate because I had Neutra on one side and Frank Lloyd right on the other. In 1952, Stein came to Calcutta as the head of the Department of Architecture 
at the Bengal Engineering College. An opportunity given to him by Vijay Lakshmi Pandit, who was representing India at the United Nations. And it was Noitra who had recommended his name. And Madam Pandit called me one day at my office and asked me if I would be interested in coming to India to, to teach. It was almost an ideal place on the Hooghly River. It had a beautiful campus immediately adjoining the famous botanic gardens. In those days, big logs used to come across the Bay of Bengal from, from Burma and be moved, moved into a place by, by elephants. It was a very interesting environment. And in the Bentani Gardens were, were two famous trees. One was a banyan tree, which was a, a, supposed to be the biggest one in the world. And the other was a tree, tree that is named, I forget what, the flowering tree, which is supposed to be the most beautiful flowering tree in the world. So it was, it was quite an extraordinary physical setup. And the buildings had been designed by military engineers in the 19th century. We didn't have any form formally structured curriculum. It was just you're either spending your time doing design or doing freehand drawing or or studying language, something like that. My students were very much impressed by Mahatma Gandhi and, and Tagore. They were familiar with their writings. They were part of the culture of the place. That's what made it a very worthwhile and ex even exciting place to teach. And I had become interested in India. This was very slightly before that. I didn't, really knew nothing about India. I had been interested in low-cost housing from the, from the time I graduated. And it was this interest of his that brought him to India. With the experience of designing shelters in partnership with Gregory Ein for the American families in California, Los Angeles and San Francisco Bay Area, Stein was looking forward to design housing in the Indian context. It was the right time. India was waking up on the call of Pandit Nehru to stand up as an industrialized nation. This gave rise to an urgent need to design townships for the workers. Stein got his first project. Well, there you go for project it's a complicated thing to talk about when I first went, went to Durgapur I was even then aware that this was a very complicated thing to introduce modern industry into a rural area we had outlined a what we hoped would be a progressive response to the invasion of the steel industry into a rural air area. Well, it, it was fairly open planning. So it didn't have, have a site plan. You still would only have to cut a relatively small percentage of the trees to make a way for road or housing or office building, what it might be. It was an in incompleted pro project. And in fact, while I have some, I visited sev several times during construction, I never saw it again after it was completed. Or I should say differently, it was not completed.
from Bengal, Stein came to Delhi in 1955 and set up his office. Stein's approach through design has never been around the conquest of space, but around the development of the environmental and social relationship. Whether it was designed for an institution or for a factory, the approach remained the same. The garden of the heart expressed the desire to create a paradise garden and to have the buildings placed within it. The idea of this garden reverberates in all his buildings like a wordless, soundless music. Shredarani, Sundari Shredarani, had been married to a well known j j journalist who had died prem prematurely. And she was a dancer, prof prof professional d d dancer. And she had decided to found an art center. For, particularly around music and dance. And this was after her, her, her husband's death, so she devoted herself full-time to the establishment of Trelaney. And the vocabulary of materials that say Trebani is, is, is very straightforward and simple. Basically the idea was beauty with simplicity. There's a uh, white marble wall and next to the entrance as you, as you come in from behind a little pond. I, I don't know if the water is still there or not. That was waste marble from the quarries, bro small broken pieces of marble put together with such good craftsmanship that it stayed all the years and, and cost very little because it was waste material. In fact, that, that building is one of my favorite buildings. It was a lovely experience working on it. IIC has an unusual amount of mine, and the idea was that it would be an oasis in a sense that any open space or plaza is no oasis in, in the, in the, how shall we say it, in the disharmony of buildings around. So IIC was meant to be a, a harmonious development. It, all, it almost got there. Well, Dr. Radhakrishnan was president of India at the time, and he was acquainted with John D. Rockefeller, who owns the oil, big part of the American oil industry, or his family did. But he, Radhakrishnan and John D. Rockefeller III were friends, and they were flying together from Delhi to the United States 
and Dr. Radhakrishnan asked Rockefeller if he would su support an institution like IIC. And R Rockefeller agreed. The original site for an India International Center was on, along the railway track there that goes to, uh, near the ITO. I couldn't figure out how to design a building like Indian International Center successfully on, on, on the, that, that particular site. But to give you an idea how I was very fortunate. I was working in my office when a friend of mine came in by the name of Mayor or, or Meyer. He had been an American military architect. He said, well, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you go see somebody? So I did. And I told Dr. C.D. Deshmukh, who was the founder of uh, India International Center, I told him I thought the site was not suitable. He said, well, suggest another. So I did, which is the present site. It was quite a privilege in, in those days, which was in the, in the 50s, to be told you could have a, a, pick a site out of Delhi. So my first thought was the Piranakila, which at that time was a, re a refugee camp for refugees from Pakistan. But the second or the third choice was the site it, it now occupies. It had been occupied by a PWD workshop. Deshmuk and Nehru were, were, were political antagonists. Deshmuk was the first person to talk about corruption in government. It became a, a, a big issue between him and, and Nehru. Nehru said there was no corruption. And Deshmukh, the financier, said there was corruption. And it was a long story. It's all, it's all in the newspapers for those days. So I tell this story because it has a, a kind of moral. It gives you an idea of the kind of people that these people were. I suggested this site to Desh, Deshmukh. And Nehru expressed interest in it and said he'd like to see the site before he, they. So when Nehru saw the site, which was about half the size of the present site, he said it's all right, but, but it's too small. And he gave us t t the site of two, 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 two bungalows. They were going to be destroyed anyhow. And to me, this is a remarkable story that these two people were political enemies. And yet when it, when it came to doing the right thing, it didn't make any difference. The model for the IAC were, were two, two previous uh, international houses, one in Tokyo and one in New York. Not, 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 not to replicate them, but to do something in a similar line from the, from the social and intellectual point of view. So they, ha they have the same social and intellectual purposes. The building was a result of an approach that Stein sums up as one that seeks the character of the solution in the nature of the problem. The form of the building was derived out of the social and the physical context. In the social context, 
the center was intended to promote understanding and amity amongst human communities by facilitating the exchange of knowledge and mutual appreciation of each other's cultures. The physical context was that of historic Lodi Park with tombs of several emperors of the Lodi dynasty who ruled during the 15th and the 16th century. My wife and I used to go to Lodi Park for a pic picnic lunches and that sort of thing. So we were, I was a little familiar with Lodi Park. I thought it would be an ideal site and the problem would be to do something that fitted in the site and didn't spoil it. So I was very, very fortunate. I, I asked for the site. I've always been annoyed that after we finished the design and so, some years later, I see people painted the concrete white. It was supposed to be a natural color. So the idea was it would blend into the landscape. For Stein, architecture was never an industrial subject. It was basically where man comes into relationship with nature. He believed building is something that exists on the earth, and hence the root of architecture is to understand nature. At the escorts factories, the doors open to green spaces and the roofs let an ample amount of light and allow ventilation to have airy and hygienic factories in which human life is of more account than machinery and the making of extra profits. Delhi changed considerably in course of Stein's career since his first designs of Triveni Kala Sangam and India International Centre in the 1950s. There is a very close relationship between nature and joy. A city could be a joyous place. If the city was to be a joyous place, according to Stein, one of the obvious ways to create the quality we refer to as joyous is by integration with nature. Well, what's happened a bit in Delhi is very, very unfortunate. It's probably no, no worse than what's happened in Bangalore, say. These were garden cities once. And you find a little odd spot here and there, like this place where we're surrounded by green. But the, by and large, yeah, De Delhi has been very poorly developed. The air pollution, water, water, water pollution, electricity inadequate. It's, it's, it's not really a happy city. It's increasingly dangerous because, it's, in my opinion, the scale is wrong. When you put too many people too close together, whether they're what, whatever kind of creatures they are, whether they're rats or whether they're people, they, they fight. Delhi had overgrown, 
and there was a need to find a way to address the issue of ecology through design while fulfilling the ever-growing demand for space. When I did India Habitat Center, these points were in my mind, that's correct. Because, see, the one thing we didn't anticipate when we did India International Center was the increase of population in, in motor cars. But the Habitat Center at least has taken care of the automobile. And it's also done more than that. It's, it's made a successful adjustment to the climate. India Habitat Center is designed as a prototype. It fulfills the functional requirements through the four and seven story blocks of offices and there is ample amount of space left on the ground to have a series of pleasant civic spaces for pedestrians. The users and the plants both are happy. That's right. It really works. You may have noticed Plants grow better inside the courtyards than outside in the sun. And in the, and in the summertime, in, Ju in June, you can come out, you come out from the, one of the buildings, the habitat center, to, to the courtyard. The heat, heat does not hit you unpleasantly. In fact, pe people have lunch out, out, outdoors in the habitat center. Stein's approach towards architecture professes practice of good architecture rather than great architecture. The elements of good architecture are cooperation and fellowship. To cooperate with the context and to learn through fellowship or apprenticeship has been his vocabulary of elements. To inherit the vocabulary of elements from the master is tradition. Beethoven studied under Mozart, Mozart under Haydn, and Bach transcribed the sonatas of Vivaldi. A rich tradition of music was born. We all have the ability to change this world into a veritable garden of paradise. But only if we first cultivate the garden of our heart. So, let us cultivate the garden of our heart, learning from this gardener's experience for whom architecture is an expression of what we are within as an individual and as a society.